80s Coleco Cabbage Patch Kit. There are a few things you want to go by before you even attempt to get started. Number one, you will need doll making needles. These are sewing needles about this long. And um, you can find them at Walmart actually. Or your craft store. Also, you want to get a 100% polyester thread. This thread will not break, okay? It will stay just like this. It's super strong. Um, it's shaped like this. I believe it's for upholstery. This here particular one's made in Germany. So you can get this there too. And it comes in different colors, but I recommend a cream color. It'll go good with your Cabbage Patch Kit skin color, no matter what the color of your Cabbage Patch Kit. So, here is one that I have, and and here's another one. So, I'm going to show you a little, few little bits on how to work these. Um, this one has looks good. Um, the only thing I have to do is stuff it and fix its butt. <laughs> it doesn't have a crack in it. This one is perfection. So, this is how a perfect Cabbage Patch Kid's body looks. Fully done, fully restored, fully and clean. Mm, smells nice and fresh, feels nice and fluffy and squishy. All right, here we are. Ball head. <laughs> this is one, this is the one I got at the um, thrift store. Um, the man talked me into getting it. God, what was his name? Oh my God, I keep forgetting. I wish I could remember his name. I just remember he was just so cool. But anyway, I have... <laughs> Removed all the hair, pretty much, the yarn inside the head and everything with hot water. I have cleaned it. I have very gently blushed the cheeks. I had to get this, um, a buffer. It's called a buffer. And I had to buff the nose to make it smooth. There was like a mark on the nose and I had to buff it and make it smooth again so it looks new. And I keep face such a pretty little poopsie. Okay. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to do this one's body. There, there was a tear. This one also, this one is the body that came from the thrift store. So, half of the arm is ripped. This is open. Um, let me see what else. A couple of toes are missing. So, uh, there's a slight hole in the hand up here, which really isn't that noticeable. So, it's not too bad. But what I have to do is remove the rest of the stuffing. But you're going to need to buy um, polyfill. You're going to need to buy some of this, okay? Because once you have a used Cabbage Patch Kit, and you're going to have to put it in the washing machine. You're going to have to clean it, okay? you got to keep them clean. I recommend once you've cleaned it, put it in a pellet case or whatever. Wait, is this stitch coming out? Look to make sure no stitches are coming loose on the sides. The original tag is still in place. I'm taking what stuffing is inside and I'm pushing it into the Cabbage Patch Kit's lower, the lower bum. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to fix the hole. And you cannot do it from the outside. You gotta do it from the inside. No problem. We can do this. Let me see. Yep. Without a problem. So, and I'm just going to use the needle that I use for the sculpting as well. But I have to make sure I do it right because I don't want to be any crooked or something. Uh, there we go. So I'm finding what's originally stitched. I'm going to start in the center. So got that in. Again, this is the Cabbage Patch Kit I got from the thrift store. Oh my god. The work you have to do. Like, seriously. Um, I kind of want to get some dye and take 
to your bodies like this color. Um, it's just no color, but then I'm matching it with the head. Yeah, it needs a little skin color to it. I kind of want to dye it. Um, but then at the same time, I think, why? Apparently, they were sold that way. Um, one of these I noticed. Um, this here body has a longer tag. Um, one is from Hong Kong and one is from China. Yeah, this one is from Hong Kong, I believe. So I didn't even know that Cabbage Patch Kids, I mean, were made like that. This is consistency of polyester fiber, super stretchable, made in Hong Kong. So this one, the little yellow haired one that we will, she was blonde. I'm going to keep her the same original hair color. This one was made in Hong Kong. And the fabric, look at the difference in color. Beautiful skin color. And I'm just, the butt has brown marking and it doesn't have the year. It doesn't say what year. But it has a nice, I like the color, the, the skin tone. It's nice and peachy. Whereas the other one, it's very pale. The other ones from 1985 are very, very pale. But then... They were made in China and not Hong Kong, so that makes a difference. It's amazing how they were selling millions of these over those years, and they could never make... I, I find that very interesting, to make millions of these in a year, and they still could not meet the demand. God, I wonder what it was like in those days. And then now look at them. Now you can... You know, they'll take them where they were really, or well, most of them have been very loved. They were truly a prized possession. Because some of them, you can see it. It looks really bad. They they looked old and well loved. And then some people are not trying to sell them for a fortune. I'm like, that's crazy. Um, I think when they have all of those holes in them and things like that, I feel like, why are you trying to sell it? Keep it to yourself. Don't give it away. Don't try to sell it. Keep it. It gave you lots of amazing memories. You might as well keep it. Okay, so I did something wrong here. Obviously. Okay, I think I'm going to have to do my invisible stitch. Because that's not... That is so not working. Because I sewed it to something I shouldn't have sewed it to. Okay. So, I'm going to sew this, what we call, invisible stitch. It's a good thing is, at least, that will come in hand. When I sew this back on. Mm. I don't know how I messed that up. Alright, I'm lining everything up. just going to sew the part of the arm that's ripped. <sighs> and I'm going to go on to the inside. Okay. Push that in. Yes, I know, I posted some more cray cray videos. <laughs> My mom, her friend, Johnny Gill, it was her birthday, and, you know, we really just let her enjoy herself and have her day. She was so emotional. She cried. It was, it was really sweet. I think what messed me up was because her legs are so long. I mean, heavy. Okay. Try this again. 
Oh, this would be so much easier on the sewing machine. But. I had to find what was originally stitched. Okay, here we go. So I'm stitching the arm back on. I'm doing it from the inside of the Cabbage Patch Kid where the arm was ripped at the top. I mean, and then two boys, you know, boys would get got a hold of their sister's Cabbage Patch Kids and Barbies and just mess them up. There we go. So, we're getting the arm sewed back on without any problem now. Yay! Yep, I'm already in pajamas. I mean, it's like, really? Where am I going to go? Nightmare. I got dressed up just for the party and do some pictures, little video opportunities and make the best of the moment. I don't care how you feel. I don't care if you don't feel like doing it. Get yourself together. Take pictures, video, do whatever you have. Do whatever. Make a moment special and make it extra special by getting your glam on and things like that. Um, some of you please take the opportunity to join in the membership. Um, it's available, it's there. It's where people can ask questions, make video requests, things like that, who have the membership. And I did it for safety reasons and everyone who's joined so far, they have nothing but raving reviews. They love it so much more. It gets rid of a lot of spam and stuff like that. Especially if you're a YouTuber who goes live a lot. Oh, that looks good. See? There you go. Now you can see. It's amazing how some of this fabric doesn't have, like, dry rot or something. I mean, you know. Do they, don't they still sell this fabric somewhere? I think they do. They still sell, sell fabric like this. I could easily take an old one apart. Like that one with the hole in the finger. Simply just undo all the stitching. Have it laid out. And I can make a pattern of it. And cut it out and make my own replicas of it. Including sewing the tag in, on the side inside the side with it. I mean, I wouldn't do it to resell. I mean, I do it for my, keep it myself to keep the body, the body up. Okay, so there, done deal. Yay, the arms are now sewn on. Again, this is the one I got from the thrift store. I was, he, he literally just wasn't giving me any other choice. So, we got that done. Um, I do the toes last. I'm going to go ahead and stuff the body because I want to make sure um, it gets done and nice and fluffy. Um, I don't like how some Cabbage Patch Kids, the older ones, their bodies are flat like pancakes. So I like to restuff them to make them nice and round and full. I think a nice healthy looking Cabbage Patch Kid is absolutely adorable. I love a healthy Cabbage Patch Kid. But then I like healthy people as well.
So say I like it to be more roundy. So I use new stuffing, mostly for the body. So that way this new poly feel can make it nice and fluffy and full and cuddly. I don't like how they shrunk all of them and made them 14 inches. They took two inches of fabric off. I mean, seriously, why didn't they just leave the two inches of fabric on? It's not expensive to make these. So I don't like how they did it. There, see? Nice, full, fluffy body. Ta-da! And can still set properly. I mean, really, it's like a plush toy. And this type of fabric, to make this, is very inexpensive. Um, the way they did these with the plastic heads, the fabric body. My God, it probably cost him two, two, $2 to make these. And with all that ball head or yarn that they had. And they were selling them for 40 bucks a cabbage patch. Alright, so we got the body done. Now we got to do the toes. Okay, so I'm going to go right here. I'm putting my needle up through the hole twice because I'm doing a double knot so it doesn't come loose. I think one thing, very positive thing about keeping a Cabbage Patch Kit um, clean, washed, prevents it from, um, it prevents your Cabbage Patch Kit from dry rotting. Okay, so now I'm going to go right down that toe, right there. I'm going to go out. I'm going to come up here where the other original was, right there. Okay, and then see that? Oh, now I'm going to come in like this. Ta-da! And then she has her toes back. Okay, here we go. Find the exact spot, and there it is. See? So, now she has all toes. So, that has been restored. Some people just rather throw them out, but I don't, I don't agree with that. There. Done deal. So this side, she has all the toes, completely restored. And now I'm going to double knot. That's why I go in once, twice. The reason I recommend double knotting because it prevents it from coming loose. So this way, once this is knotted like this, the double knots, it prevents the knot from coming loose and it makes it a stronger, tighter knot. Okay, so what I'm gonna go about doing, double checking everything, everything else looks good. No, no more problems. So I'm going to show you a trick I learned from Cindy in sewing classes making dolls. I'm going to pull the thread all the way through. You see I went to the other side of the foot, it's right there. What you do is you pull it kind of hard. Okay? And then you're going to cut it. And when you cut it, ta-da, the cut string pops inside the doll. So there is no loose string except for where you did your original tie. So once you end it, there it is. It's a done deal. There's no strings hanging where I sewed it up or nothing. You can't tell. So that was one thing I learned when I learned how to make dolls, sewing homemade dolls. I learned that sewing technique with that so that it doesn't show. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Five toes, so you're missing your big toe on this side as well. Okay, so now you can see the difference. This is the one I just repaired. And this is the one I have to repair. 
And what I'm going to do, because this needle is so long, I'm going to go ahead and replace the thread. Again, this is, it says made in Germany. I don't remember where I got it from. It's 100% polyester. It doesn't break. It does not break. You want that. You want a thread that's absolutely not going to break. So this way, if you're doing a, making a doll or doing a doll restoration, I'm doing a lot of long thread here. So I don't have to keep re-threading this needle. Okay. See that super long needle? It's a doll making needle. So if you don't have one, go get one. <laughs> that's all plain and simple. Go get one. Okay. Starting underneath the toe, yeah, underneath the toe down there, where the seam hip comb is. A double knot, and now I'm coming through again. I'm going once, twice, double knot, two double knots. Okay, I'm leaving this out like that. Um, and I'm going to go under where this original toe is. That toe, the one right here, right here. I'm going to go over top of that thread. I mean, because it's already popped loose, broke, or whatever happened, whatever reason. That's not a tight thread. There we go. So, I'm going to go through. See where I came out? I'm going to show you. I came out right up here at the top. So, and what I'm going to do is overlap that same PC right there. That's my thread. I'm going to overlap that toe. And then I'm going to push my needle out to come out over there. Oh, almost got it. There we go. So, I did it. I pushed my needle where it's going to come out over here because I'm going to make those other two toes that are missing. Now, when you do this, um, you want to hold your thread. The woman upstairs is knocking on purpose to piss my mom off. Thank God she's asleep. There we go. So, see? I fixed that toe. And now I'm going to make this one over here. And then she will have all of her toes completed. Completely restored. See? Now we have all our toes. Now I'm going to go back again through there where I just made the fix the toe. Restore the toe. I'm going to double stitch. Okay, it's there. See? Let me count. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Done deal. So I'm going underneath into the foot. And I'm going to come out where I did my first original knot. There. So that is completed. Done deal. Double knotting, because you don't want it to get loose. You want it to stay nice and tight. There. One more double knot. And then I'm going to look at the other one. I'll be done with this one. So I'm done with this one. This one has been completely restored now. So now I can cut this piece of thread. And the needle, again, like I showed you, you take the needle, push it through. Doesn't matter where you push it through. It can be anywhere. Like that. I just push it through. You're going to pull it. 
So now I'm going to pull like that. I'm going to pull. So when I cut it, now it's going to pop there. So the rich, that thread goes inside the doll's foot. So you don't see it. You can't tell why I did that. And now she has a clean body. She has all of her toes completely restored. And her body nice and fluffy. I love it. It smells good. I like it. I will put more stuffing into the top part before I put the head on. I like a nice healthy Cabbage Patch Kids. So there you go. That's how you make a Cabbage Patch Kids body completely boop, restored. Now I set this one aside. Now I'm going to show you how many people have a Cabbage Patch Kid. Alright, I'm looking for the holes and the butt crack's gone. The butt's gone. It has no booty because that, that string broke. There's where it was knotted. Look at that. There's the original butt string that made that. See, there it is. I'm just going to whoop, cut it off. God, it was like a worm. Pulling a worm out of the Cabbage Patch Kids booty. Alright, I'm double checking. Toes. I'm looking for any t tears or things like that. So far, everything looks good on the legs. The arms, ugh, except for here. This arm has a plastic piece in it. Um, and it does have a hole. So, there. See that? Yeah, we have to fix that. I can't believe I ended up setting myself up to get something where I had to do all this work on. Well, at least I can make a video of it. So what I'm going to do is, I can see the hole so clearly. Gosh, I'm thinking like, I, I need some cotton. A little piece of cotton in that finger. Something because that plastic piece, I guess it's there so they could hold things. I guess by the time this one was coming out, they were like, oh, let's make them hold things. So they put a, some plastic thing in there. Don't ask me what. I know nothing about this. All I know is that I'm trying to put the I'm going to add some filling in where this is so that it doesn't bust to the stitch. Oh my god, it's not going in. Is it? Oh. Go on the inside. Is that thing? Can I pull it out? Oh my god, it's like a plastic finger look. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of gross. What is that made to? Is it apparently it's a clip. It's like a clip like this in a V-shape that goes in there. Okay, that's just weird. Okay, you're not gonna be holding anything, so I'm just gonna cut it. Oh, God, you can't cut it off. Oh, wow, it's like super hard plastic. All right, I'm going to see if I can take it out. Hopefully, I don't damage the cabbage patch kit. All right, I broke part of that off. I'm going to stick it there so I make sure I can put it in the trash. Oh, okay, made it go in. Uh, no, where's the cotton? And you have to use something else to stuff it because you can forget it. Your fingers are not going to work. And you can see the rivet I've had these for years. Dark using plastic. So apparently that's what put the hole in her finger. There we go. Go in. That's it. Go on in some more. Did it. Okay, great. So, 
I got the finger stuff. This side looks good. This is where the hole is. Oh. I am going to. I'm going to do what they call a um. Invisible stitch. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was that far off the camera. Okay. But I need the body because the parts that I feel, they're weighted, it adds weight, so it makes it harder. Alright, so I'm going to start my... Now the invisible stitch, if you go to build a bear, you know what it looks like. Oh, I got to do it this way. When they um, are stuffing your stuffed animal, your toy, and how they're pulling the thread on each side like it's crisscross like uh, shoestrings. That's kind of like an invisible stitch. Mm-hmm. Because once you pull it sealed together, you don't see where you sewed it together. You don't see the stitch. So, that's what I'm going to do with this part of the Cabbage Patch Kids hand. Because I don't want a Cabbage Patch Kid that looks, well, you know. I don't want one with holes in it. Ta-da! Did it. Works for me. side. Perfect. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, done deal. I did it. Ta-da! There it is. So, now I can knot this up and do the same thing I did before. So that you don't see the thread. Hold on a minute. Let me see something I'm going to have to Got it. Now, I fix the thumb. <gasps> this Cabbage Patch has a pink signature on its bum okay now I'm going to cut the loose thread that was attached to nothing and the thread that had that has the needle I'm going to go in through here and I'm going to come out somewhere over here along the side of the arm so here's thumb it's inside I'm pulling it out do it tightly. There. So, thumb has been fixed. I'm pulling it slightly tightly. See how it pulls? And then when I cut it, the, the strain goes pop inside. That's why it drops. So, now it's in tight. The thumb is fixed. Now, we have to... I'm double checking everywhere else. My fingers... The toes, even the toes were not originally done perfect. Oh gosh, look at that new belly button. 
All right, let me restart this body so we can work on the booty. It's just something I don't say very often. So we're gonna get the table a nice round booty. And we're gonna end up using what's left of that fiber fill. Y'all saw the back, so it was pretty full. I'm not stingy with my stuffing. I mean, really. It, it, I don't care what kind of stuffed animal or dog that you are working on. Don't be stingy with stuffing. Uh, I, I mean, I am a firm believer in that. And that's just how I am. I like my stuff to be nice and stuffed. Sometimes a little, just a, a little overstuffed. But, I mean, in the long run, so what? It's worth it. Okay, so you see, there's no but. There's a signature right there. But you can also see they sort of pleat. This is what we call a pleat. I have to do these in my jeans on the back, on the back two sides. Because my body, I have a fuller bottom and a smaller waist. So I'm going to show you how to fix your cabbage patch kit. So if you have a cabbage patch kit and the thread is busted... Or your cat's booty, I mean your cat's, I mean your cabbage patch kid's booty is. Do I have enough thread for that? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. I was going to call you earlier, but I didn't want to bother you, so I didn't. Alright, so I can pretty much see where everything was. So I'm coming here between the legs. And I'm not going to do a knot. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. I had a phone call come in. Uh, your ace... What? Stated up until six. Sorry about that. Girl, I don't know what you scribbled. I mean, what you wrote. Anyway. So, I made the knot. Um, right here. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is take my needle. I'm going to pull it up this way. Now, originally, I can see the hole right there. It was literally halfway up the doll's back. But I'm going to go right above it, slightly above that, because I don't want to make a hole. Okay, so you see, I'm inserting. I'm going in. I got my needle inside, and I'm going to go past halfway, do out in the middle of the stuffing. Like I said, I took doll making classes, so it's easier for me to do this. And... I know how to do soft sculpting on a doll. So I'm going to line this up with that right there. Make sure it's lined up with that. That's a sewn part right here. There's a sewn pleat. Oh, you said it. Oh my gosh, you poor thing. There we go. See? She's got her booty back. It's all about that base. About that base. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to have to do is, because it doesn't want to stay, I'm going to double, I'm going to go in here twice. Oops, do this like this. Okay, there we go. No, 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 where did my little thread? I'm going to do that one more time. Um, hold it, looking at the original thread, swear. I had on previously there so her butt is done it's a very crinkly one all I can say it's better hers than mine okay so I'm going to I made a hole like a loop to, to so to make a knot I'm going in twice. You want to go in twice so it doesn't be, um, so it doesn't come loose. See what I mean? I double knotted it. So with that double knot, there, it'll hold. So it's not like popping loose or anything like that. 
Okay, and I need to do this one more time. Okay. Now I'm going to go through it again and do it twice. Wait a minute, is this thread? Is one of the threads I've gotten too small? No, it's there. Okay, so. Now, there you have it. She's got her butt back. As like me. So she can sit down properly. And everything else. Mm -hmm. So, nice, fluffy, soft. Yay! Alright. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the thread, the little thread, the smaller one where I started. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is take this one. I'm going to go back up inside the Cabbage Patch Kit. I'm going over here. See, I'm just going to let it pop up the needle. I'm just going to let it pop up wherever. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to pull. Just a little bit, not too much. You don't want to rip the thread. I mean, you don't want to rip Okay? Oh, Lord, she can drop it like it's hot. So, when I cut it, I rub it like this. Now you can't tell. See? That way, now you, you can't see any um, hanging threads or anything like that. Hi, Rolls World. How are you, sweetheart? Hope everything's going well. We are doing restorations on Cabbage Patch. This one, we had to fix a thumb. And we had to reset the body and fix the booty. So she has a nice squish, squish, tush, tush. And I'm going to end up putting more of this stuffing inside. Like I said, sometimes I can overfill. But it's it's not going to be a problem. Because it, it's good for your cabbage patch to be nice and thick. You know what I mean? I like a thick, I like my cabbage patch kit to be thick. I, you know, I always thought I would end up with a husband that was a big person, that was a big man. Because they always, I don't know, that's what I liked when I was a, t a light teenager. I don't know, I always thought bigger guys were cuter. Anyway, that's me. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Oh, you just went to the thrift store and you found a poopsie slime surprise doll. Oh, that unicorns that poop. Oh, Jesus, unicorns that poop slime. I'm so glad I did not know about those until now. Thank you for that. So, see? Nice full body. Looks new. All that dirt and grime is gone. This was from the thrift store. Okay. Now, this stuffing, I'm double-checking the others because th that bag of stuffing right there, it's really, I, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to, they go, somebody's going to get overstuffed. It's amazing. That one stretches a lot more. Where was, the, okay, this is China. This is Hong Kong. So they did, the bodies have slight differences. Eyes. That's for sure. I mean, mine's going to need the stuffing to hold her head up because I'm giving her a head full of hair. Okay, there we go. I like it nice and stuffed. See? I mean, because I like taking Cabbage Patch Kids with me and holding them in the car, things like that. You know, I ain't going to lie about it. So I noticed that the ones from China have bigger bodies. Than the ones from Hong Kong. You don't notice that much in the picture. But believe me. In person there's a difference. Oh wow. Barely had a thumb from Hong Kong as well. Oh. Okay. This one's thread is, looks looser. But I mean hey. But nice and full. So is this one. So, I mean, they're, they're fully repaired. And this one, this one has all of its original stuffing. This one has its original stuffing inside. Oh, okay, so that's the redhead. I'm working, I'm also working on a redhead. Rerooting her right now as we speak. Yep. 
Any stuffy board in here? Any I told you I will stuff these boogers. I don't care. Okay, put that body over there. <sighs> now this one's over here. Hi Paris. So yeah, that's kinda weird. Wait a minute, do not 1985, 1986. Oh, oh, that's right. This body goes to the, um, um, corn silk cabbage patch. Just watch. Oh, you saw me shaking it. I was cutting up with my mom's friends and I wanted to make them laugh and let them have some good time. You know what I mean? Yeah. 85. Okay, the 85. Ah, uh, goes to the redhead I'm working on. Goes to her. Okay, this is her original body. Okay. Alright, so this is all I got left. This little foo foo fiber. Um, I started her last night. I had to boil some water, put water into their heads, and I had to use these. Yeah, see that? These little ploy looking thingies. It took forever. And it hurt my hands. So they were both bald, they're both very, very cleaned and buffed and slightly blushed cheeks. I've already started rerouting my redhead. Um, so I want you to see her bangs. Um, I think there's a little bit too much. This one looks better over here on this side. But over here, um, about three or four of these bangs are too long. So guess what? I'm picky. I'm going to pluck them out. No, really, seriously, I'm going to pluck them out. Okay, there's one. Oh, thank you, Ross World. I did. I had my glamour on today, as you can see. I wet my hair. I pulled it up in a ball for now, but I was slinging hair and everything. I just wanted them to have fun and have a good time. That's what it was all about today. So, there we go. I have removed those plugs. See, there are the holes. It's not a problem to remove them. I use hot glue gun to put it back in. Okay. Now, I am going to set her right there. And, oh, oh, I need to put this needle up. From where I did the re, um, this cannot, okay. So set that stuff over there. Here is my tool. Yes, I got this big, huge Wonka Wonka needle. This is for a cross blade. Um, I took the blade out and stuck the needle inside. It's a bit wonky, but hey, it's so steel. So the end is popped off like that at an angle. And the, this is folded like this. Um, long hair. Yeah, this could be her hair. I was going to do this live last night, but it was just so much, and I, I felt kind of tired, and I didn't do it, obviously. Y'all didn't see me do it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to hold that little curl. Did it right this time? Yes, I did. That's much better. Okay. So now I'm putting these back in. They're not damaged. So all is well. Throwing it up perfectly. Because this is going to be two ponytails. But I'm actually thinking that I kind of want to give her a ponytail up here. So I haven't decided if I've wanted to take, um, do the hair across here. But maybe also add um, a ring, another row of hair yarn across the top up here through this area to make it um, like do across here. So that way I can make this top pony do one like this bigger and then have hair that hangs down. I thought of that. 
uh, where it goes into two ponytails. But then I thought, uh, I don't know. Or maybe have it loose. Or should I do it with one ponytail? But then again, I said, now nah, forget it. Two ponytails. But they are going to be nice and thick. So I am going to be adding extra holes into her um, head. And believe me, this is a very thick needle. those out because they have to match. I want them to be the same. They have to be the same length. Do you see how much work this is? This is why I get bothered by sometimes when people are like, when they ask you how much do you charge to do something and then you tell them your price and it's kind of like, oh, that's too much for me. And I'm thinking to myself, well then, okay, why don't you just take your bunch of yarn Glue it on, slap it on a cross, and just glue it and be done with it. This this takes work. It takes a lot of work to clean the Cabbage Patch Kid's head to look like that. And then to clean it, butt the face, remove any shine marks from it to make it look fresh and new again. The heads are hard. They're... These are like vintage from 1985. You could hurt someone with one of these. I'm not kidding. You you actually really can hurt someone with one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the hairline. So with the hairline across the bottom here. See that? It's actually going to have little loops. It's going to be little loops going across the very bottom. Back here. Um, making sure none of this yarn is affected. Perfect. It is not. Um... And you actually make it a little bit shorter. So that's how I'm doing it. And I'm simply going to plug it into a hole here. I'm twisting as I go in. And then I can gently pull it out to the length it needs to be. Like this. And then you have double, two double pieces that are holding out. Now, the thing is that whatever kind of yarn, the yarn that they used originally feel, it feels like 100% cotton. I swear to you, it feels like 100% cotton. Now, with me, I use long. I go with a long piece. Don't ask me how long this is. No telling. But, I mean, I've got this whole thing of yarn here, see? So, that's enough to do two heads, long, thick hair. So I'm not stingy. I, I add the hair. Once all of the hair is there. I would rather have too much than too little. Um, I can go in and then I can. Once I blow the hair in. I can cut it to the length that I want it to be. And I'm always doing this here to keep it from being tangled. There. So see. I'm working on the bottom. Okay, so that's like that. So her bangs are done. And this is the one that came in the box. So this one came in the box. She was already a redhead. But I could not find an exact match of her hair because it was unraveling at the ends. So now I'm going around the bottom. But I'm actually going to take around the Cabbage Patch Kids um, head. I'm going to make a whole extra row that goes all the way around the entire head. To give her a little extra thickness. Also because she's going to be two ponytails. I'm going to add a few more whole hair. About five hair holes in this area. And also this area. That will put our ponytails exactly in place. Like here and here. So they'll be sticking up a little bit. You know like. Boop, high ponytails. About like right there. So it should be cute cute cute. Now. I'm going to set this like this. I'm going to zoom in with my camera. Yep like that. And then, oops, we're going to go down. Turn this around like this. There. So you can actually watch me do this. Did that thing unzoom? There. Rainbow High Reroute. Uh, 
See, I don't see the purpose in a rainbow high reroute. Those dolls are already perfect. They look amazing. So, I'm not even going to deal with that. Rainbow high, they have all these colors. So, what is the point in changing them? They're different and they're glamorous. I mean, they have all the colors. It's no need to reroute them. Or change them but hey somebody wants to do something somebody wants to be known for doing something I suppose okay I'll turn my camera around that way so as you can see I'm having to press and twist at the same time and then pull the curl out some because this curl it ends up a little bit shorter to go around the um, back part of your cabbage patch kids head as you can see, it, it's something. There are people that charge about $100 to reboot a Cabbage Patch Kid. Well, it costs just as much money to reboot a um, Cabbage Patch Kid. Well, for me, I'd reboot a Cabbage Patch Kid. It, um, it depends on how, I mean, how much, what kind of yarn, how many different colors of yarn, all of that kind of stuff. But for me, with Cabbage Patch Kids, I like doing restorations more. I'd rather for them to look like they're, you know, normal hair colors, like they have. But if someone was to ask me, I would charge $65 to reboot one. No, that's one of these. That's like only if you wanted one ponytail. Like, so you just want like little poodle hair bangs here. And maybe a little bit down here and then one big ponytail. If you want two ponytails, $70. Add extra five. And then if it was like a full head, oh god, that's a hundred right there. That's just for the labor. That's not including getting the yarn for the hair. It's funny, my mom's friend's birthday, they were like, what are you drinking? They asked me, I said, I'm drinking coffee. I put on my Starbucks, my Starbucks coffee in the morning, this morning, to wake myself up. And I told them, they don't, they didn't believe me. I said, I don't drink alcohol. I don't, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not into alcohol. I had to grow up around too many people who were alcoholics. I grew up in a home where there was alcoholism in the family, in the home, and it was very scary. So it, it was not pleasant, and I had to live in fear most of the time. I did, I did make this tool. Um, Raw's World. I did. I made this tool, sweetheart. And I've had it for a very long time, actually. Um, three or four years. Almost three years, I believe. Almost three years. So, see, as we're coming along, these are laying down. Because I want them to. I want them to be pressed and laid down. Very nicely. But I noticed that the original hair, it was, it felt like 100%, it felt like cotton. I know some of it was done in acrylic, but honestly, they did different types of yarn, different textures. They really did. Um, both of these, it did not feel like acrylic. It felt more like a cotton blend. 
Um, and I think that's how come I couldn't find an exact match. But then 1985, and then we're dealing with the fading, the color fading. And they've also changed the color palette and how they're doing. Well, we're going to see what happens. I know she's going to tell amazing because I have a blonde that's in my closet I did. I have several of these that I've done. Um, that's what I was hunting for in storage. I have one I rerouted and I, I feel really lonely sometimes. And actually a lot of times. And I, I felt that way lately. And I, I, I don't like feeling alone. I don't like being alone. But it's, you know... But I, I learned how to do this a long time ago. No, I don't repaint them. Um, with Cabbage Patch Kids, like Coleco, um, these dolls are so iconic and legendary. I, I'm not really into the wild colors and things like that on a vintage doll. Now you take a newer Cabbage Patch Kid, one of the newer ones and do that, I'm fine. I'm, I think it's cool. But as for these, the originals, um, no, I have done repaints on one with the tongue that was sticking out. <sighs> and I did repaint, I put repaint on the eye color, some lashes, I have to be in the mood, but that's because one of her eyes were originally scratched or something. But no, I'd rather just restore them. I like original Cabbage Patch Kids from the 80s, the ones that people got in fights over for it to be that emotional. I mean, these dolls carry a lot of history, an amazing history, and I would rather just have it restored. I don't want her to like something she wasn't. I want her to look as close to her original self as possible. I mean, you just can't replace a classic. You just can't. I think that's one thing about like with Barbie. I, I think that in our Playline dolls, there should be, here I'll zoom out. With our Playline Barbie dolls, I think that there should be more variety. There should be, I, I think that there should be a line of Barbie dolls in the Playline for maybe like $20 range. Where they have, like, Superstar Barbie face or something that's reminiscent of what it used to be. Including a body that's similar to the old one. And I'm talking the bust size, the hip, the, the um, you know, the curves. Um, they can create a new one, something a little bit more modernized. You know, that would be really cool. But then again, I mean, as myself, that's me thinking like a designer. And they have a Barbie. I think she was from 19... No. Was it 2000? She was called Ballet Lessons Barbie. Um, I think she has the perfect body. The only thing she needs is rubber bending legs and um, the, the she has fully articulation, the bust underneath it, perfect body for oh my gosh, she'd be perfect body for that completely. I mean she's made like a Barbie extra, but better, better articulation. This hair is way too long, but I would rather cut off, I mean, it's what, $3 for a ball of yarn? So I don't have a problem. I'd rather cut it off instead. That way I can make the hair as long as I want. I do have a Rapunzel one. Me and Raphael both do. 
he ended up getting the one I had. And I made her look very presentable in the box and everything. So he had got, I don't know, he could have sold her, so I don't know. But I do have one like that. She had a face more I didn't like, but one did her with all this gorgeous, super long hair and did it up in a high ponytail. And then she had her bangs. And then when I put the clothes on with the shoes and everything like that, I was like, oh my God, she's so cute. It's true. It's true. Hair and clothing, face paints, they can make a doll. One that you wouldn't even like. And you change it and make it into something amazing. Oh my God, your room looks so good. The way you've rearranged it. Crystal, I like the pictures. That was, I think that was cool. Definitely give you something to do. Do you like it more? Do you like it more rear the way you did it? Is it? Does it feel more roomy, more spacious, more comfy? Well, you know, Raphael has so many dolls by me. Seriously, so many. And if he was to ever sell them, he has plenty. And he buys them. So it wasn't gifted. I didn't give it to him. He bought her for me. So, and then if it gets to the point where, you know, you can't, you just don't feel attached to one. It just happens like that. Doesn't bother me. I mean, he bought it for me. So he turned around and he sold a couple. So... I'm fine with that. It doesn't bother me at all. Raphael has gotten so many dolls for me. It's just, you know, to me, it's like when someone gets one, you know, they paid for it. If they decide they don't want it anymore, I'm cool with it. So it's not a problem. So, see, she's getting all her little baby curls. See how they're coming along? Yay, her beautiful face. And we're almost done. Honey, I'm not buying anything back. I, 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 I'm not buying anything back. Anything that I sell, forget it. I'm not buying it back. Because I can make something else similar or better. Now, I have had... Someone who's had a collection of American Girl dolls I did. They had several of them and, you know, they didn't want them anymore. Um, and they asked me that I want them back and they sent them, they give them back, they gave them to me free. They didn't want to resell them, they gave them to me. And sent them to me and what I did was, I think I'm the one who sold them. And I think I, I used the money to donate to charities. Sometimes I need money. Sometimes I don't. I try to be happy with what I have and not with what I don't have. I will say this. Oh my gosh. Uh, um, American Girl has Kira's house that went on sale to down to $160 with free shipping. Oh my gosh. Fingerprints, Clorox, and blood. Well, I'm going to be honest. When it comes to my dolls, I'm sorry. I do not want one with flaws. I do not want one with cracks. And I certainly don't want her with fingerprints. You don't know where people's hands have been. You know, people dig their hands. They dig in their butt. What would you do if you got a doll and somebody had scratched their butt? And they didn't wash their hands. And I don't mean scratching their butt outside their pants either. Girl, I don't want no doll like that. No, thank you. Keep, keep, keep your butt cracked, baby, to yourself.
Girl, you are a mess. Oh, I saw your videos the way you cut up. Mm-hmm. I saw your videos you posted with your heavy metal cutting up. Girl, you even had your husband doing it. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was fun. I think it's amazing husband and wife can have that kind of relationship. Uh, I thought it was awesome. Okay, I'm trying to get through. See, we're almost there. And then we start making new holes. Well, no, we don't because I forgot. See, that whole line here. I know you missed that. Oh god, that's what y'all should do when somebody's getting your nerves down. We had music up today. Well, I guess some of y'all heard that I did. Let's just sneak a peek. Um, through a reel. Nike has approached me again. Nike has been trying to get to me to let them sponsor me. As a YouTuber with clothing. Um... I had I did Google it, so it, it is legit. Um, the one that I got. But I would, I want something glam. I would do something glamorous. But then again, I mean, if I had, I don't have the millions of um, subscribers like that. So, and I'm fine with the way things are. I'm fine with the people, the viewers I have. I'm not trying to say that, oh, I want everyone looking at my channel and subscribing. No, you subscribe if you want to. You um, join the membership if you want to. It's your personal decision. You know, I'm just saying you get a lot more perks and um, exclusive. Exclusivity. Ex exclusivity as being a member because you get to participate in all live chats. I'm not changing that. That is the number one perk for my people who are in the membership and I have an Android and I saw my phone and I saw the words join J-O-I-N in blue so I'm pretty sure if you look for it you'll see it that includes watching my videos because I saw it earlier today while I was looking at a video I was going to um, edit it and I saw join so I know that it is up there and available because if a cheap Android like mine I show it, I know other people can too. You just have to look for it. <laughs> no, no, no. You got all the little the emojis and stuff I put up there so exclusively. Of course. Oops, sorry. me working with my cat this is not for sale so I'm telling you now she's not for sale this is for me for me for me for me 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 And I've seen some Cabbage Patch Kids where people don't do the little curls going around. And I'm just like, ugh. Why don't they just take the time to do it? Just take the time. Give the little curls. Because these little curls are so cute. Even though they had a machine to do the originals. I, I just love it. But I love that. I would love, I love doing my restorations because... I can make it thicker. I don't like how the original 80s Cabbage Patch Kids, the ones that people fought over and they paid 40 bucks for. Um, I read your comment and lost my thought. <laughs> but 
but anyway, the curls, I mean, this little detail like that is just so much fun. Have I ever sold a doll and regretted selling it? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I have sold a doll and regretted it. Yes, I have. Um, and I don't remember which one it was. So, but uh, I have been like, oh God, I wish I hadn't have sold that. I wish my friend, I wish Sharon had moved here. Oh, gosh. Me and her could have coffee and sit outside out there. And relax and enjoy ourselves. Girl, you, you have your time and don't you, Miss Dixie? She sees the vet Monday. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, I think I was talking about memberships. Yeah. Because I, I like the fact that everyone can come on and have our discussions and there's no harassments and crazy stuff. Well, you use cardboard. You use those cardboard boxes. You use. you take them. To, did you tape them together? Because I mean, it works. I think it well, it looks great. No, Digny Dixie is not pregnant. No, she she probably never will be. Um. Yeah. Uh, most likely, she'll probably end up having surgery. But no, she's not pregnant. She's never gotten pregnant. Oh yeah, that duct tape stuff, yeah. It ain't going nowhere. Girl, imagine if you had containers where you could store doll stuff in and then have them stacked and done it and have the dolls on top. That would be cool too. But no, I gave my cat the opportunity to get pregnant. And um, I don't know what she did for two days with that boy cat, but... He obviously didn't, he hit the wrong hole or something, I don't know. Didn't work. So, that's done. So, we'll see what happens. Either way, I, I mean, the veterinarian is coming here to look at her eye. Possibly antibiotics, make sure for eye infection. And it's not costing me anything. No, he wasn't neutered. He was a um, feral cat. Trust me, he could spray and it stuck. There was nothing wrong with him. One thing about doing a video like this live is the fact that you get to see how long it takes. This is why people charge a lot of money when you want a doll. And then if someone's selling one like when I try selling a custom repainted doll, come on. You have to understand the years of professionalism it took to learn how to do that. The time, the hours, and then the money to, for the paints and the quality products in order to do that. And then too, I mean, I do see people's work, it's pretty, but guess what? They use chalk. They use chalk, they use pencils. And then they use this spray sealing stuff. And guess what? The work is not waterproof and it's not permanent. And you end up paying a lot of money for something that's actually going to be fading in time. In other words, that all of that stuff is going, it's going to fade. It's not going to be permanent. It's not going to stay. I know from experience. Because I've had people send me their dolls and ask me if I could repaint them the way they were. Um, so I had to take a picture of them to repaint them. I could not post them on video, camera, nothing like that, no photos. Because I didn't want the original artist to know 
that the paintwork was messing up. Yep, and I ended up doing it for them. And you best better believe my signature left on the bottom of their foot. Well, I was like, I don't want you to sign it. I said, honey, that's my paintwork. It's signed. I'm not going to paint some a doll and then someone try to pass it off as someone else's. Hold on, it's going to take me a moment. Let me get this into this last hole. There. Done deal. Okay, so there we are. All of these holes have now been done. Ta-da! Her hairline is now complete with all her cute little swirly curries. All of her bangs are done very nicely and pretty to match. Yes. So, I am now going to start at the top of the head. And, um, no, it was a wildcat. I think Dixie just wanted to tease him. She's a tease. Okay. So. Now, we have all of this exposed, and now I'm going to do a row all the way around, and then we will do the center part here, but before we do, I'm going to add a row of hair on this side, a row on this side, then I will do the center. Yes, like I said, I, want, I like the hair to be nice and thick, and that ensures me the thickness that I'm looking for. Yes, the hair is too long, I know it's hot. And that was the point of it. Okay. Alrighty. So what I do, I simply take in, twist, boom, it's in. There it is, locked in. Just like that. Um, the way that type of needle I'm using uh, to root is metal. See, I know, um, almost like those Mattel Aero dolls. <laughs> that glue seepage because of the way they seal the hair in the head. It's a dolls, like you need to be aware of the products used. That's exactly right. And see, with me, when I reroot a doll, I use glue from a hot glue gun. Now, you can't, the, the glue that Mattel used, it wasn't even glue, it was wax. They used a wax. Um, there was a wax that went into the doll's heads, and the wax got hot over shipping. So while the dolls are being shipped here, that wax got hot and it seeped through the holes of the packaging. It wasn't glue, it was wax. Because glue is not going to feel like that. Now, with my dolls, I use, I take a hot glue gun and I, um, that's what I use to glue inside the head. All of them. Because once I do it and pack it, it never gets hot enough to get, you know, melted or anything like that again. Oops, I'm about to do a loop. I'm not doing loops. Hi, Pookie. Yeah. Kiss, kiss. You just want to be nosy? Mm -hmm. Do you want to get my lap? Come on. We move Cabbage Patch Kid over, so we will lay her on the bed. If you're getting in my lap, go ahead and get my lap. Come here. So, um... Let me get to it in a moment. So. I'm waiting for her to make up her mind what she's trying to do. 